Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. You probably wonder what I'm doing here. I'm in the paddock at Cheltenham Racecourse. The crowds have just arrived. They've brought along their antiques and their collectibles, and they are determined to do some business today. I'm going to sit them down with one of our regular deals. Now, they're going to try and tempt them with a cash offer on the spot today. So, £10. Oh. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to advise them, no, don't accept that. Take a chance, go to auction, and try and get some more money yes. there. We are looking for a great winning day today. People want to do real business, take cash or gamble and go to auction. Either way, they want to pass the winning post with the real deal. Our first item is a mysterious stick, but can John get the measure of it? What have we got here? What do you know about this? Well, it's, has it been in the family? It's or? been in my family, and my family were farmers, so I imagine they used it for measuring cider, something like that. Do you know if they made cider? Uh, yes, they did. They did? Yeah, they did, yes. And did they make beer? I'm not sure. Right. But a lot of farmers did make beer. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. And has it been in your family for some time? As long as I can remember, it's always been in the family. But where it came from, I don't you know. You don't know? No. For a start, it, it's made of boxwood. Mm -hmm. This box is um, very, very slow growing, but very dense. And was used for all sorts of things like this, for measuring, you know, horse measuring sticks, because it was just extremely hard and didn't damage. And also, it was hard enough to take, like, the engraving, they could get the print on of what this is. And looking up and down, we've got markings like Kilderkin, Barrel, Hogshead. Now, those were all sizes of beer barrels. Right. Date-wise, they made these things for a long time, and they were obviously always made the same. Tell me, now, why is it, after all these years, come to be sold? I have so much stuff. <laughs> I <laughs> thought to myself, it could get broken. And I thought, um, I'd see if it was worth anything. Right, let me see. You've got 20, 40, 60 pounds. I thought it was worth perhaps a bit uh, more than that. Well, I like the story, I like the article, and I like you, so I'm going to put a brown one on the table. I'm sorry the colours clash, but. Uh, £70. And is that your best offer? That is my, that is my best offer. Um, oh, God, it's £80. Pounds. Yes, that should be fine. You're happy with that? Yes, yes. That's very good. Thank Megan, you. thank you so much. Thank you I'm very, very much. happy. And you know, never know, it may stay in my family for a while. <laughs> Over on Jan's table are a fascinating pair of Chinese vases. But tell me a little bit more about them, where they're from, and how long you've had them. Um, they were my great-grandmother's. Right. And I always remember, as a little girl, her telling me stories about them every time I used to go into the house. They've been passed down the family. Yes, so you've had um, them years? Years, yes. yes. Years. So why are you selling them today, Jane? Well, I'm selling them because I want to get fit. I've just given up smoking. Well, right. not just, six months ago. Yes, well, and, that's a good um, enough excuse. And I need the money to buy a bike. Yes, mm. fair enough. They're not the typical sort of stock that I buy, but um, they are interesting. Um, it's a shame that this one has a little bit of a nick in the top, which mm. does affect its value. But I think there is quite a nice mottled blaze on the top, which is shiny, and obviously with the mat at the bottom. And then all the figures are glazed. I don't know. I think one of them's in a boat. This one, um, no, whether they looks like yeah, with looks a sort like of fishing it. basket. Mm. And so they are. They're certainly different. I will make you an offer, okay. and we'll see if we can come to some sort of agreement right, for, that, for that bike of yours, <laughs> yeah. so you can get pedalling. <laughs> Not one with stabilisers. So, I just warn you. Right. <laughs> so that's twenty. If we said 40 pounds, 
No. Is that going to be anywhere Not really. near? No, because what you want? That'd Can't a get child, a bike for that money. Child, <laughs> child's bike. <laughs> that would just buy you the stabilizer. Exactly. Bit. <laughs> okay. So that is, shall we say, sixty pounds. Get a is that getting more a little bit? Yeah, because you know how the expensive bikes yes, are nowadays. Yes, they are. They are. <laughs> I mean, I do have to take into consideration the one is not perfect, mm -hmm. so obviously they're being sold as a pair. Oh, I think so you can push a little. Bit if more. I make it <laughs> seventy, how does that grab you? I think you can, can you stretch to a fiver. All right then. So if we make it seventy-five, will that get you riding off into the sunset? It'll be nearly there. It will. Yeah. Oh, well, fair enough. Then. Thank you very so much. So we do a deal. Thank and you. And I'm, I'm looking forward to having those. It'll be interesting to see how they go. Jan is pedalling off with a great deal there. With beauty in the eye of the beholder, will this next item tempt Alison? I, I used to look after a little lady, and when she died, I looked after her brother and he gave me a couple of her paintings of them and, you know, this, the gifts from her. She, she uh, knew the artist because she used to have her holidays down in Falmouth. When I look at it, I would feel it was around about 1950s, but that tie up. That's right. And it's painted, it's an oil on board in a gilt swept frame. Yes. There's a competency there. Um, what would be very nice if we had Gwen Wicker, RA, I meaning mean, that she was a Royal Academician, which would be nice for me. Yeah. Um, and there are certain things that makes me feel that she's a competent amateur. Oh. It's this little area here that's quite flat to my eye. And yet, when I look here at these, I mean, are they poppies, I think, perhaps? I'm not sure. There's such um, a life and colour to it. And what would you do with the money? Well, I'm hoping to have a holiday in uh -huh. London. Mm. Excellent. OK. Um, well, I shall try and uh, give you a reasonable bid on it and uh, we'll see where we go from there and what you right. decide to do. So, 50. Well, I was hoping for more than 50. Um, 70 pounds. No, I think it's worth more than that. If you felt it was worth more, then maybe you would like to weigh up whether you'd like to go to auction. And what would you like to do? Well, I'd like to go to auction. You'd like to go to auction? Yes. Excellent. And I hope you do really well with it. I'm sure you will. I hope you get loads of money. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Well done. With a trip to London relying on its success, the picture heads off to auction and the gavel of auctioneer Lindsay Braun. Alison said, I will give you £70. That's right. Now, you yeah. turned that down. Yeah. I presume you thought, well, we might get a few more pounds at the auction. That's right. Hopefully we will. The estimation is 100 to 200 and there is a reserve of 100 quid. Now, what I want to know is, if you win this money, or if it sells, what are you going to do with the money? I'm going to have a holiday in London. OK. Anything particularly you're going to do in London? Go and see the Tower of London? Go We're and going see... to see a musical. OK, what kind of musical? La Miserable. La Miserable. With and Alfie who... Bow. Alfie Bow. What a voice Alfie Bow's mm. got. So that sounds like a fantastic night out. All we've got to do now is sell this picture. Spring flowers, very colourful picture, what should we say? Uh, start with 100, 100 pounds. 50 then, put it in, 50 pounds to start. 50 online, 5 here. At 55, 60 in the room, 5, 70 in the room at 70, 70 in the room, 75 online, at 75 online, it's worth more than this, 80 in the room, at 80, 85, 90 for you, 90 in the room, at 90, at 90, 95, 100 pounds for you. 100. Right. <laughs> Bring him home. <laughs> One ten online. We're getting more now, Pam. So that means we've got a hundred quid. And we've got a drink in the bar as well. <laughs> right. Are you sure? At one ten online bids online. At one ten last chance. Very handsome. I think she likes it more than you do. At one ten. I'm selling then at one ten. 
OK, good news. Good news, Pamela. A hundred and ten pounds. Right. We've got a little bit of commission. I make that close to ninety-four pounds. Right. Are you satisfied with the ninety-four pounds? Yes, I am. On the day, the real deal was a hundred and ten pounds under the gavel, about ninety-four quid, and Pamela is going to see Les Miserables. Yeah, now that is a real deal. So coming up, be a wonderful girl to play poker. There's a game of wits going on. Are you getting excited? <laughs> what is David Ford playing at? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Cheltenham in Gloucestershire. Over on David's table, the stakes are high, but who's got the best poker face? You're selling the family jewels? Indeed, yes. Tell me about it, Patricia. It looks a very pretty little thing. Yes, yes. My Ooh. husband bought it for me about 20 years ago. Oh, lovely man. Well, yes. So you've gone off it or you don't wear it? You I don't it... wear it. I've worn it once, that's all. Yes, OK. Yes. So why have you decided now to sell it for that reason? Well, <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't bring it really to sell. I, I was going to just, uh, you know, want it valuing, but... But I you thought about it and I you thought... I thought about it and thought... I'll get yes. some money out of that David. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's an idea. <laughs> Let's have a little look at it. It's, it's a pretty little article, isn't it? I mean, these are nice little brilliant cut diamonds and they're very pretty. Yes, the, the, the actual gold it doesn't appear to have a hallmark, or at least not one I can see. There is a bit of a mark there. I think it's probably 18 carat. I mean, it's certainly higher than nine. Yes, yes. What I don't like about it, Patricia, truthfully, um, although it's very pretty, it's very small. Mm. Would it go round your wrist now? I think so. Let's have a little go, shall we? Oh, yes, yes, it does. It's quite yeah. tight, but it does. Mm. Yes. Right, money. We've got to try and give you some, haven't we? Well, that would be nice. I'll pull it out of my pocket. 50? 100 pounds? 150 pounds? don't like that. Not really. You want more. £170. £190. I think that's me. No? You don't think it's good enough? No? <laughs> Patricia, no one's listening. How much do you want for it? Oh, it's up to you to do a bit better than that. A You've lot got to figure better. in a mind. Lot a lot better. A lot better, yes. There's £210 on the table, and that doesn't seem to be exciting you at all. Not really, no. It's just, if it was an inch longer, I'd, I think I'd like it more, because I'm worried about it being a little bit tight uh, on the average lady's wrist. £230. You'd be a wonderful girl to play poker with, wouldn't you? You've got a completely <laughs> poker face. You'd never know what hand you were holding. 230. Are you getting... getting how are you thinking? Oh, that's, that's good. Are you getting excited? <laughs> 250, and I really am out. That's lovely. We've done a deal. You've done the deal. You're going to shake my hand. Deal done. Patricia played her hand well there. Now David has a very special guest and a model citizen. Make yourself comfy because once upon a time in the dealer's den, we saw the very same item. Hello. Hi. Nice My name is Stuart Hofgartner. This is interesting, isn't it? I know. <laughs> what do you know about it? We actually bought the house 14 years ago and there was a shed in the garden and we found it in there. There's a plaque on the front. Let's just have a look, see what that can tell us. Oliver forging machine, scale one to six, made by apprentices in the training department of Charles Richards and Sons Limited. David takes up the story. The gentleman that sat next to me 
is Charles Peter Richards. Now, you received a phone call from your daughter-in-law. Correct, yes. And what did she say to you, Peter? She told me you must watch Dickinson's Real Deal. Well, we all know television. that. <laughs> <laughs> but what did she tell you? And she told me because uh, they were selling a model of an Oliver machine that was made by the apprentices of Charles Richards and Sons Limited. Now, this company was first founded when? In 1870, by my great-grandfather. What did you produce? We produced bolts and nuts of all types and descriptions, but the real speciality was railway track fastenings ah. for holding a track together and holding it down onto the sleepers. So it was a successful business? It was. OK. For many years. Right. At the time of the producing of this, you were the MD, the managing director. That's right, yes. In fact, the little bird tells me you were the one that commissioned the model. I did. Now, you don't recall how this slipped away from family hands. In fact, it was in your office or boardroom, wasn't it? I believe so. I'm reminded that it was, yes. Now, when you got the call from your daughter and you watched it on Dickinson's Real Deal, what did you do next? Well, I did some investigation to find out the name of the person who had purchased it. Which was our, our dealer, Stuart Hofgaard. Yes, and as a result of getting in touch, I went down there and purchased it. Tell me what it means to you to be reunited with this very extraordinary model after all those years. Well, I was absolutely thrilled that it would be able to come back into the family, so-called, mm -hmm. and to be around and recognised for what it was. In the dealer's den, John and his next guest are squaring up. Will it be no holds barred? This looks very interesting. Can you tell me a bit about it? It's... Um, well, I can tell you a little bit. Obviously, you know it's a belt and it's a wrestler's belt. Mm -hmm. And me and my mate were pulling a ceiling down upstairs and this fell out of the ceiling. Really? So this belt was fought for twice by this block here and by me and my mates, trying to, <laughs> trying to get hold of it. I love the story. And no idea how long it would have been there, I mean... Um... Well, it must have been there an awful long time, because as you see it now, is as it was, yeah. when we found it, and that was in the, in the how, late how 60s. So presumably it had been up there for an awful oh, long yeah. time. What was the date of the house? It was a Regency house. So this is 18... I think we saw on there 1845. Yeah, so, I mean, it could so, have been... Yeah. When, it was, when, they, when they built the house, it could have gone up there when the people moved in. Let's have a closer look at it, because we've got some writing on two elements That's on right, it. Yeah. It says, first prize for men of all weights. This belt, in eight pounds, was wrestled for by Cumberland and Westmoreland men residing in London, March the 21st, 1845. Won by George Brunskill. Um, I mean, that's lovely in itself. I mean, it's, I love things that are dated. The eight pound and, would have been know, nice, Eight pounds a lot of money there. Yeah. I put that back down there because I want to lift up this. And this says, March the 21st, looks like 1850, won by George Brunskill. So he obviously kept going. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure where this is. I don't think it's silver. I think it's plated. Um, the quality of the leather, if you look at it carefully, is absolutely superb. Mm. And, you know, you look at the stitching and it's incredibly fine. Let me see if I can tempt you. Right. That's 20. And that's 30. You're looking interested. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> now, let's, let's try another 10. No, I, that's not enough. Way low. Mm. But I do think it's very, very interesting. There's no question about that. But it's a very specialised area. Having said that, in a specialised sporting sale, who knows? Um, I'm sure you've, you know, you've been told that. Well, yes, I should think. But I will go another ten pounds. Make it fifty pounds. Um, no, thank you. I think I'll take it to auction. Robert. Thank you for bringing okay, it in. Lovely. Have nice a, to very, see you. a very good luck, and I hope it does very well. With that poultry offer, John failed to wrestle his way to a deal, and the belt heads to auction. Have you had people look at this belt before and give you an opinion on it? Well, I have. 
And what was their feelings? Were people interested in it? Well, or? they were. There was two different uh, auctioneer people, what we were doing some work for, so yes. I took it along. Yes. And, and what was their opinion? Well, they said it was very interesting. The estimation here is two to three hundred, and the reserve is two hundred pounds. Mm. I would have thought it was well worth that kind of money. The question is... Will it? What about the people here? Have we got the right kind of collector and will they see it at £200 or even more? We're about to find out. It's Good. coming up over there. Very interesting lot. What should we say? 200 to start on this one. 200. £100, put it in. 100 start me off someone. 100 online. 110. 120 here at 120. With me at 120, 130, 140. What's coming up? 150. 160, 170 with me now, 170, looking for 180. At 170 then, are we all done? At 170, not enough I'm afraid. Didn't quite make it. I thought we were on to a winner there. Online, people were coming in, there were not people here in the room bidding, but I thought we were going to sell it online. What's your feelings now? Well, I'm not bothered. You're not bothered, no. are you? It you can go in the cupboard again. It fell out of the sky or it fell out of the ceiling. It hasn't sold on this particular day. I'm going to say, stick it back in the loft, in the ceiling, and in some time in the future, bring it out again, and I'm sure it'll sell. Coming up, it looks like this teapot's been hit by a hammer. I can see it's had a bit of wear and tear, so it obviously has been used. It looks like a murder weapon, actually. But will it sell or go under the hammer? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Shelton Racecourse. Now, will Jan's interest be sparked by these matchboxes? So, here you've brought in these Vesta cases. Yes. So, would you like to tell me why you brought them in today and where they've come from? Uh, well, I'm selling the them because I'm trying to sort of get rid of a few things that I've been collecting over the years because yes. I've had that particular one for well over 40 years and that particular one uh, my father gave me but I don't know the background of that at all. Right. I've had these from uh, about 30 odd years. I bought those two at a sale. Right, well I think that they're, they're very nice. These are respectively these Vestas 1921 and 1905. Yes. They're fairly run-of-the-mill mm -hmm. engine turns um, but nice enough. I mean, in a way, the best one is the cello, exactly. even though it's only plated base yeah. metal. Obviously, because of its shape yes. being a musical instrument, yes. it's got a nice strong hinge on it for the strike. And then there's something rattling about inside, yes, which it's turns been in out there to all be the time. a little mm -hmm. plastic doll. Yes. I wonder what the connotation of that exactly. was, we may I never don't find know. out. It's always been in there and she will always remain, yes. I hope. Yes, and so they the, they will go together. Mm -hmm. They won't be separated. Hopefully. So we'll put some money on the table and we'll see if we can come to a deal. So we'll do 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. Right. How does that grab you? Um, Am I getting I warm? You are getting warm, but I do think the cello is the ideal and, um, you know, the, the, the better the, of the, the three. The top item. Yes, I do. Yes, yes, it is. OK, yes. well, if I put a 10 down to make it 90, <sighs> how does that seem? Could you round it up? Could I round it up to? I had a feeling you were going to say that. <laughs> well, let's have a go at rounding it up. And if we say, I'll put another 20 in. £100 on the table. Do yes. you think we have a deal? Are you happy with that? Yes, I am. Have That's you so the handshake? And we've done Thank the deal. You. And we've st struck a deal on the strikes. We so have indeed. I think we're both happy. Yes. Next up, this silver-plated teapot has seen better days. But is Alison's interest brewing? So, have you used this? No, I have never used it. And you know how it works? I think so, yes. You have to put a tea in and then pump it and then the tea comes out there. Exactly. It's what's called 
a self-pouring teapot. So you would put your tea in there and then you would pull the lid as you just did and then as you press down the tea would come out the spout into your bone china cup. I can see it's had a bit of wear and tear so it obviously has been used. Yeah. Looks like a murder weapon actually because I can see a couple of dents there. Um, I would think the age of this is probably about 1880s. That's 1886 was on the bottom. 1886. Yes. It's had a few modifications. Did it? Yes, like the little finial oh, here. Wow. That's plastic. I turn it over. That's all got a long screw and, yeah. and nut. That wouldn't quite be right to the piece. Unfortunately for me, its condition is too tired to really whip me up into a buying frenzy however it does have a value and I will have a go and see if I can buy it so 10 pounds 10 pounds I think it's worth a little bit more than 10 pounds <laughs> how much more do you think I would say another two of 10 those. another two of those you think it's yeah. worth 30 I don't feel £30 for it. No? No. I'll put a fiver, 15. It's it's the condition of it yeah. for me. Mm. And the 1960s furniture doorknob, it's the time and effort involved in finding one that is in keeping with the piece. And it's that sort of thing and the dents. What you have going for this item, on one side of the coin is, it is a novelty. But on the other side of the coin, it is a poor example of a novelty. If you go to auction, can you get more than 15 quid? Maybe. Maybe you can get 20, 25, knock off 15%. Maybe not. I think the problem is, most deals will walk past that and just go, not worth the trouble to do what needs doing. But if you go there and it sells, it will only be another few pounds, yeah. I, I can tell okay. you. And then you've got so the commission. My advice would be snap up the 15 mm. pounds. I'll say no more, but it's a difficult object to sell in that condition. Okay. Okay, okay we've got a deal then. Yes, I can't yeah. admit. That's <laughs> lovely. It's been much, great Alison. fun. Yeah, thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>on David's table and will it be from Russia with love with this vintage gold watch? You're selling the family jewellery? Yes I am. This, uh, uh, this particular piece I inherited from my grandmother who unfortunately uh, lost her battle with cancer about two years ago. Okay. But it's not, uh, it is of some sentimental value that, that I'll say, but it's not something uh, I would bear, it's obviously a woman's watch, not something my girlfriend would bear. So I thought, I, if I could find somebody that would enjoy it, I would be willing to let it, let it go, basically, and put it towards maybe future education, something like that. Okay, let's have a little look at it. Um, I mean, it's very nice quality, and the, and the bracelet is gold as well. I don't know this maker. It's a Russian watch. It's isn't a it? Russian watch. Yes, it is, and it's uh, it says Zarya on it. I mean, it's it's a pretty thing. It's uh, five eight sta five standard, which I think is fifteen carat or oh, fourteen yeah. or fifteen yeah. carat gold. It's quite heavy, um, and it's it's quite an attractive, simple ladies' watch. Yeah, and it's, it is. seems to be ticking away, which is always a it's, good sign. Yes, it's in working condition. Quite what it's worth is difficult, and how much I want to own it is also um, a bit of a decision. Um, yes. I don't know much about Russian... Watches. No, truthfully I don't. <laughs> 50 pounds. 100 pounds. 150 pounds. 200 quid. Well, I, I'd try to push you a bit further, because well, I, I think I'm not an expert, but I think mm. uh, the gold alone is worth 200, 250. I see out of the corner of my eye Mr. Dickinson attending the podium, so just before he gets on, I'll put 220 on, I think I've closed the shop. Margine, is it? Yes, it is. Interesting, different, unusual. We've got two estimates here. We've got two to 300 and three to 350. I think because it's a Russian watch, yes. 
it's rather excited our independent values. And the auctioneer, actually, I think is the one person that's got the three to 350. Mm. I really don't know, but I'm going to say because of their determination to say mm. unusual, different, collectible, it probably could be worth more in the auction. We might have it away on the day and we might not, but there's a reasonable chance that we will. Uh, to be honest with you, I think 220 is definitely not enough. Thank you very much for your offer. Can I have a good auction? Yes, I will. I wish you well. Have a thank great you day very, at the auction. Thank you very much. Sorry I wasn't the man on the uh, day. Not a problem. So has Marjean made the right decision? Find out after the break when even David is in for a big surprise. He of little faith. Also coming up, it's chaos on Alison's table. So if I put 20 in there... And so I'm not outdone see? by Mr Dickinson, I'll throw another 20. OK. <laughs> what on earth's got everyone throwing their cash around? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the famous Cheltenham Racecourse in Gloucestershire. Before the break, we saw David miss out on a deal by a short head. Tough decision, tough decision. 220's definitely not enough. Gonna have a good auction? Yes, I will. The Russian watch is about to come under the hammer. As Marjean couldn't take time out of his studies, the Duke is taking care of matters. The watch is here at a three to £350 estimation. There is a reserve of £300. My only concern about this is it's a small lady's watch. It's 14 karat gold, but it's Russian, so most people here will be bidding probably on the scrap value. Is it going to make the 300 quid? Oh, we're about to find out. It's coming up now. And what should we say? I'll start at 300. With me at 300. There is a bit of 300 on the book. 320, 340, 360. The Duke's underestimated this lot. 380, 400, 420. At 420. With me at 420. 40 anywhere. At 420. Are we all done? I'm selling. With me. OK, £420. I make that £357. I have to say, with the reserve at 300 I had a few doubts whether this Russian watch was going to sell. He of little faith. Now we head back to the dealer's den, where a rather special lady is stealing hearts on Alison's table. OK, so you've bought in this sovereign today. Yes. And how long have you owned it? I've discovered it a, a couple of days ago. Uh, I, I knew I wanted to bring things here, and uh, I searched and found a, a bag of coins. <laughs> you just said, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So I don't know why I'm laughing, it's just the story's quite funny to me that you, <laughs> you, you wanted to bring something on yeah, and, and you found a gold coin. Yeah, well, I was going through my husband's uh, um, things because yeah. he died recently and I thought, right, I've got to get uh, um, things organised. And uh, so I thought, right, we we'll get, get some uh, advice on this. It was minted in 1913. Yes. And... Um, before I get my money out, if I buy it today, what are you going to do with the money? Use it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I mean that. I, I mean, uh, with uh, all the costs that have been recently, you know, I've had a lot of funerals and things like that. Um, so, so I, you're I, just going to use the money to pay your bills? Yes. Well, I haven't got bills at the moment, but there will be when I get... Uh, and round to and redecorate in the house and so on. Oh, you're redecorating the house? Everything, all the way through. Why is that then? Well, it needed doing and I couldn't do it because of my husband's uh, disability. Right, right, so yeah. I didn't want to disturb the poor chap. OK. He's been married uh, 60 years and, uh, you know, very, very... Uh, I, I made a very good choice and I hope he did too. <laughs> I'm sure he did. I think you're adorable. I dig digress, I'm sorry. Not at all, not at all. Um, I will just be making one offer for the coin and then you can decide whether you want to take my money 
or whether you I want to get <laughs> It will be, it will be, it will be. I will certainly try and beat the sale rooms. Ooh, that looks good. I'm coming in here, Gwyneth, to oh, hear. I'm sorry if I... No, don't you worry, darling. I've been listening to yes. everything that you've said. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And I'm here because we need to look after you, Gwyneth. I'm sure we're going to get a wonderful price oh, for the sovereign. <laughs> and so I'm here on your behalf to make sure we can get this oh, money oh. and then you can go off and spend Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> So you're a most amazing lady. Right, let's see the let's see the colour of your money. The yes. colour of my hot cash. So there's fifty pounds. What what colour is that? That's a fifty pound note. Never seen one. Never seen one. Right. Can I have a look? Yes. We'll be getting a few more <laughs> of those. I'm going Don't to be worry rich. about that, Gwyneth. We'll get more of those. <laughs> I'm gonna be rich. <laughs> Ooh, uh, gee whiz. It's real, isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah, that's absolutely. Real. There's another real one. Yes. One thing. I am afraid to carry twenty pounds. I was robbed. I was you? robbed of them. Oh. Okay, oh, don't so, worry about it. It's that. all right, Gwyneth, because we'll send you home with secure accord. <laughs> so you no, don't have I, to worry I, about I, that. I don't mean that. I imagine taking that to a grocery shop. I'll send you home with my driver, Big Martin. He'll look after you. He'll have to take me to the grocery shop, shopping and everything until I've spent well, it all. Well, what we'll do, we'll break it down to smaller notes, should that's you it. want it. Yeah. That'll make it more comfortable. Are you happier with 20s? Well, that is better, yes, please. Yes. OK. So, 20, 40, <laughs> we, 60... We, we play poker here. We just do this, Gwyneth. 80. We just do this. We 100. We, we, yes, we pretend we, we, we're just not interested. We just keep saying, come on, let's see your money. I don't know poker. Right. Don't, don't play games like that. I'm religious. No, you're because you're a good girl, aren't you? You're not of going to I'm... be misled by David, are you? <laughs> you keep putting the money down, girl. Never mind the talking. 140. We need more. 160. We need more. 180. We'd like more. Yes, indeed. 200. I think, personally, we need to give over that price. So if I put 20 in there, that makes it now 220. And so I'm not outdone you see? by Mr Dickinson, I'll throw another 20. OK. Well, on that note, what we're going to do here is we're going to look across to the very kind Alison and we're going to say, Alison, thank you very much indeed for being generous. And that is the very, very very best price you could possibly hope to get for your sovereign. Now that is a real deal. Thank you. All right, my darling. I've watched every programme of yours. OK, but well, it's <laughs> lovely meeting you. <laughs> Thank you. So there's £240 on the table, Gwyneth. Mm -hmm. And our Mr Dickinson thinks it's a good deal. What do you think? Yes. <laughs> so we've got a deal today, haven't we? Yes. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Gwyneth. That should get your decorating spree well underway. After a busy day, let's find out how our dealers did with their purchases. Alison is still not thrilled with the teapot after no interest she's threatening to give it away. Yes. And well she's pocketed that Thank sovereign you. as a tax-free investment for the future. Thank you very much. Jan sold the Chinese vases for £100. And David made a little profit when he sold the bracelet for £278. We've had a great day here in Cheltenham. There's been lots of buying and selling just the way we like it. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.